Hello and welcome everyone. Here we are. We're doing a discussion video of today's July 2013 or 2020 July 13th ban restricted announcement. That was a terrible start. Holy crap, that was a horrible intro. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to talk about the bannings and unbannings that happened and why they were absolutely horrendous and an absolute waste of a week. Um, Wizards did what they did normally did. Excuse me. They uh, announced an announcement. They made an announcement announcing there was going to be a ban list last week, and it was, uh, as one would expect, a waste of time. Um, so, I would like to first state that prior to this video, I have done a decent amount of research. Um, I spent a good part of the last two hours going over um, people's thoughts. Other players like Jeff Hoogland, Jim Davis, um, Todd Anderson, and other former or current uh, current pro players slash streamers who play a lot more of these formats than we do, and I've been going through their stuff, reading their thoughts, and have with their thoughts combined with my own, I've kind of come to a more or less a more clear thought. So to clarify, there it's this video is going to be very ranty. Um, I'm going to try to avoid any unnecessary language, but I feel like my time was absolutely wasted, and I feel like most people's are, and I feel like this is also basically Wizards' white flag for certain formats, basically them saying that they couldn't care less. In my opinion, at least. Again, um, we're going to get into it, and we're going to start with Historic, and we're going to end with Modern. So, um, if you don't care about Historic or Popper or Pioneer, you're going to have to skip forward a little ways. Uh, that should, Modern should be the longest. Shouldn't, it should be one of the longer parts, but probably not the longest. Um, anyway, let's just hop into it. So, um, we're going to start with Historic. So, Historic to me... It's always been kind of a joke format anyway. Um, it was essentially just a kind of poor excuse of a way to adapt the cards that you couldn't use on Arena anymore. Um, and don't get me wrong, I like that Nexus of Fate is banned now. Um, but I think the fact that they even have a suspension list and a banned list anyway, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. There is no real difference. Um, it's almost like they're just trying to use the excuse for to make themselves feel better about unbanning cards. Um, they're going to unsuspend them instead of ban them. But um, I don't believe any of the cards that have been suspended in Pioneer have been have not been banned so far. Without being banned first, then being unbanned, like Field of the Dead. Um, but anyway, so Agent of Treachery is no longer suspended. It's banned, which is no surprise. Winona Joiner of Forces is now banned instead of suspended. Kind of weird, but again, that one was weird in general. Fires of Invention is now banned, was suspended. Again, no surprise. That card is just ridiculous. In formats that that card is not too slow in, that card is ridiculous. Next to Fate, just straight banned. Um, this isn't too surprising. Next to Fate is a... Very powerful and degenerate card. It does a lot of things that A, no other turn spell does, but B, it's just all around really powerful card. Instant speed, shuffles back in your deck. It's just a little ridiculous. Excuse me. And then the one that at first to me was really puzzling was why would you ban Burning Tree Emissary? At the same time, you ban Next to Fate. And I understand that the point was supposedly the two like most prevalent decks, despite not having any actual tournaments and stuff going on, in the format is the Wilderness Reclamation Next to Fate decks and Gruel Aggro. Now, I've played a ton against both those decks, and I understand why they're so ridiculous. But I'll tell you right now, when I played against Gruel Aggro, do you know what card I've never had a problem with my opponent casting? I'll give you a second. 
If you said Burning Tree Emissary, you are correct. I think Burning Tree Emissary is nowhere near the problem. Yes, it gives them a mana advantage because they essentially get a 2-2 body for free and get a follow up with another threat. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Have your Burning Tree Emissary. Have your other threat. That's okay. I don't mind that much. But what I do mind is the fact that when I'm playing any deck that isn't just outright a control deck or an aggro deck trying to beat you before you can kill me, I can't block because Embercleave makes blocking pointless. Um, I'm not saying Embercleave should have been banned. I'm saying that suspending Burning Tree Emissary feels like a waste of time. Um, now, other comments that people have said have that I've seen kind of made that same point. Um, from videos I've watched of people playing the green-red um, aggro decks, it seems pretty clear that Burning Tree Emissary is not a huge issue. It's Embercleave. Um, yeah, I, I don't get that one. I think that was a waste of time. And I think that just further proves that not even Wizards takes this format seriously. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I like it. Don't get me wrong. It's got its fun moments, but come on, Wizards. At least pretend like you care about your formats. Um, all right, next is Popper. Popper, I, I haven't got to play a lot of Popper lately. Um, but one thing I've seen a ton from my friends online that play Popper, plus other pros that have played Popper, um, streamers that play Popper, is that Mystic Sanctuary is obnoxious. And as playing it and playing against it frequently in modern, I can say the card is obnoxious. Without a doubt. Um, also, Expedition Map, I know uh, when I would play Popper, the two decks I played were Tron and uh, Blue Red uh, Snow. And those two decks were both really, really powerful decks. But Expedition Map made Tron so powerful. Oh my god, that deck was ridiculous. So. With that being the case, I uh, I can see why they would ban those two. And finally, the one that's going to by far be the longest one um, is Pioneer. Pioneer events, the, the major events, don't even hardly fire on the weekends or on the evenings. Um, and a lot of it's to do with the fact that the format is just very saturated with combo decks. And that's not just a problem. That's not that big of a problem. The issue is the fact that there are two combo decks that they're fight you fight them at such different angles that it's not even comparable. Yeah, you can graveyard hate to try and stop um Underworld Breach combo. The team are Underworld Breach. But that doesn't line up the same with... Um, with the Inverter of Truth combo. You have Graveyard hit against them, and they go Inverter of Truth and then slam Athos' Oracle right after this, win the game, because you have no Graveyard, meaning that they have no Library anymore, and they win the game. That's a bit of an extreme case, but that's, that's the whole issue. They're fought at two different angles, and... On top of that, Blue Black has some of the most interaction and play in the format. So yes, it's very difficult to beat. Yes, it's very difficult to play uh, play against. And yes, Sultai with Uro and stuff like that is one of the best decks in the format. And one of the best counters to it. And sure, there are a lot of people that are still playing Pioneer. Not that there's a lot of people playing Pioneer. But the people that are playing Pioneer, a lot of them are willing to play more wonky, non-traditional decks. But, at the same time, a lot of people don't play Pioneer because the deck is, the format is unfun. You don't want to play against the same exact decks. And that's it. The same core decks are winning, and they're not doing anything to do anything about it. They unbanned Othanissa. Whoops. Okay. Is that going to all of a sudden make a deck... A new deck strong enough to compete at a level that forces the two combo decks out of their top tier, out of their number one and number two spots? Probably not. Is it going to make decks like the uh, 
mono green aggro and mono green planeswalker deck stronger? Sure, it might. Mono green aggro probably won't play it, but the mono green planeswalker deck probably will. I'll probably like it. Um, mono green devotion, of course, is still a thing. Um, sort of, not really, but again, the point being, I, I just is infuriating that they have made this format and it was this exciting new really cool format really nostalgic and really awesome for those of us who've been playing in this window you know almost the entire time or the entire time you know i only missed a couple sets out of that entire window and that's to me is just so frustrating that they show such little regard or care for the format you know, pretty much just letting it die. And then they, they use the response of the numbers that they are getting aren't showing um, that big of a difference to that high of 1%. But the issue there is not a lot of people are playing. <laughs> There's not a ton of people are playing Pioneer right now. So to prove my point, there are currently 189 active players. I was 190. There were 180 active players in this league. Now, I'm going to look at something else real quick. There are 116 players in the standard league. That That's, that's kind of sad, how close that is. There is literally another application that is better for standard, minus competitive events based. And there's 116 players in on MTGO's leagues. And there's only 189. Like, that is 73 players difference. And in my opinion, those numbers shouldn't be close. Standard should be easily the worst besides Vintage, maybe. And, which I think it is. I think Vintage has only got 70 some odd players, usually. But yeah, and then Legacy turns around and it's like... Or, I mean, not Legacy. Pioneer's like, oh, yeah, no, I, I'm right there next to you, 189. Like, come on, people. And yes, for anyone wondering, I did just enter those two different leagues and then immediately leave them just just to prove a point. <laughs> I, I don't... I, it's just so irritating. Pioneer was a format that, don't get me wrong, I didn't pl record a lot of content for, but that was more because the channel is much more about modern. The channel is far more interested in modern, so I understood that. Pioneer was fine, did good, so when I found a Pioneer deck I really, really liked, I played it. And that was the end of it. That was it. Now, it's like there's there's not even 200 people in the Pioneer Leagues. And you're going to tell me that's a healthy format. Like, someone has got to be dense and not even paying attention to their own numbers. And, like, I feel like an asshole about this. I do. I really, really do. But, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. I really don't. It just... Ah, it's so frustrating. Like, why even have a format? Why even care about it anymore at all? If you're just... Uh, never mind. Alright, we're done with that. We're on to Modern. Modern's where we're at now. Arkham's Astrolabe is banned. Um, this is no surprise to anyone. And if it is... I'm sorry. Um, this card is obnoxious. It makes mana bases too too good. Um, the fixing is a little too powerful for a one snow mana card. Um, for me, I didn't care. It was fine. Whatever. Cool. Keep it. I was looking for more unbans from this ban and restricted list. Also, I feel like I feel like if you're gonna do a ban for modern, it should have been something impactful. Something I think was really gonna colossally change the format. Like like banning Uro. Don't get me wrong. I don't think Uro should have been banned. Um, I expected it to, but I don't think it should have been. Um, I feel like it should have been something big or like, I don't know, Ban Mystic Sanctuary. Something big. Something that's like, yeah, okay, we, we see that there's these blue decks are all of a sudden the most powerful decks in the format. We want to change that. With this, this feels like that, that first banning with Hogak where they're like, you know what? Nah, Hogak's fine. We're going to keep our 8-8 eight, eight legendary creature we created that's free. Instead, we're just going to get rid of Bridge from Blow so you can't get a bunch of zombies. That's what this feels like. 
it feels like we, we want to get rid of the problem the, or something that we consider a problem. But instead, we're just going to nip it and try to s cut off inches at a time and see if that shrinks the issue. To which inevitably they're going to be like, oh, it's not shrinking the issue. All right, let's just ban let's, – let's just ban Uro. Or let's just ban Islands. Better yet. There we go. No more Islands. Obviously, I'm kidding. I hope they don't just ban Islands. That'd be stupid. But the issue well, – I guess banning Miss Sanctuary would just be buying, banning an Island. Okay, that's kind of funny. Never mind. But anyway, my, my point is they put so much effort into um, – or so much effort. They 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 feign so much time and effort into this ban list. Like to me, the only reason you announce a week ahead of time you're making a ban list, you're gonna make an you're gonna make an update to the ban list, is because you have made this decision and you want to spend that seven days to finalize your decision, get some testing and get some numbers in, and really look at what you're doing and see. Okay, this is gonna make a difference. This is going to really change things about the way the current format is being played. And I, I can understand that, all right, you're making four formats. So you you make some big changes in four formats. One of them is going to get thrown to the wayside. Like, again, I don't play enough Popper, so I can't say that that was an obvious choice. Miss Sanctuary to me is obvious, but I can't say the Expedition map is obvious. So my point is... I feel like they basically are like, yeah, we're going to focus on two formats and the other two we're just going to make changes to, but we don't really care. That's how I feel about Pioneer Modern. I feel like they're like, eh, everyone expects this card to be banned in Modern, so let's just ban it. We'll, we'll try to make bigger changes later if this doesn't take enough away from the blue decks, because it won't. It's not going to take enough away from the Uro decks, Bant decks. I mean, don't get me wrong, it might make it more susceptible to Blood Moon. It might make him have to play a little bit less greedy. We're going to be seeing all these uh, green-white spells and all this other stuff splashed into our mono blue deck. But it's not going to make a big change. And my, my I guess my biggest issue isn't so much the changes or lack of changes they made. It's more about the fact that they took the time and effort to announce a week ago, hey guys, we're making a changes to the ban restricted list. And then are like, yeah, but not really. <laughs> like, there's a reason I was like expecting Uro to go, and that's because I would have expected with all this time with no changes to the modern ban list since the last since Mox Opal got the axe, that they would have put some serious time and effort into figuring out what our issue with modern is, what they feel like the problem with modern is, and they would have made an effort to change that. And honestly, I don't think they did. I don't think they made an effort to change anything about Pioneer or Modern other than let's try to put a Band-Aid on that gaping bullet wound you have on your chest. If, that's, if, if, if they really think there's a problem with Blue Dex, that is. Again, I don't think that's a problem. I think Uro is obnoxious, yes, but I don't think it's obnoxious to the point where Oko was, where Oko is just... Even fighting Oko, Oko deals with. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just frustrating. I feel like they wasted our time. Um, I guess it's mostly because I have deliberately took days off and not recorded content. Because I didn't want to record decks that were going to possibly play cards that were going to get banned. And then release content, what, Tuesday, Wednesday with banned cards. Um, I guess I just feel like they personally wasted my time. And I guess I'm just mad about that. So I'm a baby. You can call me a baby in the comments. Tell me I'm a wuss. Um, you guys can tell me even that, heck, th these changes were too much, um, if you do. Um, if you guys do play Historic, though, preferably, or Popper, I'd like to hear your thoughts more so on those. Um, if you have thoughts on Pioneer and you think that this is okay, please don't even comment. Please don't. I don't want to hear it. I appreciate your viewership. I appreciate everything you do. But I... If you think Pioneer is okay, I'm happy for you. I really am. And at the end of the day, I'm completely okay admitting that my opinions for a format are not what's going to fit everybody. But to me, Pioneer is just not... I tried to record a video with it a couple weeks ago, and I was trying to play Jund again. 
And yes, Jund is not a good deck. I'll admit that completely. But I've also played Sultai on my off time. And it's just miserable. I literally played a league of nothing but Inverter and Breach. All five leagues were two Inverter, three Breaches. And that's just not fun, man. And I know we've been playing a lot of Goblins in Modern. I remember. <laughs> but again, that's the new hotness. This other stuff is not the new hotness anymore. It's just the best decks. So... Those are my thoughts, guys. Um, again, not not super interesting. Um, I can admit that I'm probably wrong. My opinions are probably invalid. Um, I'm probably just way too biased. Um, also, I hate this whole suspended thing. I think that's absolutely stupid and a waste of everyone's time as well. So, yep. Like I said, I, I feel personally like they wasted my time personally. So I'm a little bit more irritated with this banner restricted updates. Um, let me know what you guys think, though. Let me know if you guys agree with me, or if you guys think I'm insane. If you think I'm, if I think I'm being crazy, please tell me. I'm happy to admit it. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for taking your time to watch this video. I know it's 20 minutes. Uh, it's longer than I want it to be, um, but it does mean the world to me. Every single one of you guys means the world to me. Um, I want to try to figure out something we can do to try and push for that 500 milestone. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. What's what would be a good incentive? to do for when we hit 500 subscribers. Um, yeah, all right. I'll talk, catch you guys in the next video.